Hello wonderful person, this is Anton, and in today's video we're going to be discussing yet another amazing simulation I've discovered that allows you to study everything from water currents to winds, but most importantly, the pollution levels around our planet Earth, especially for those of you interested in studying climate changes and variety of scientific uh, studies that involve climate change. Anyway, welcome to What the Math and let's discover what this simulation is all about. <laughs> Now, I've actually discovered this simulation completely by accident on the YouTube channel for this particular, um, I guess, company or organization that developed this simulation, where they kind of give you this. And this is a one year time lapse of CO2 surface concentration in 2016. It kind of shows you how uh, carbon dioxide circulate around our planet and where the highest concentrations were. And I thought, oh, this was pretty amazing. I decided to discover how they did this. And then I realized this is actually a website. This is a website and a simulation on the website where you can directly interact with all of these tools right away on the spot. So the website actually is called Null School or Earth Null, Null School that is. And uh, it's essentially a very, very complex simulation. I have no idea how they made this. It is absolutely incredible and it works entirely in your browser. Uh, so what you're seeing right now is, I believe, the wind surface, or sorry, surface wind, <laughs> wind surface, ha ha ha, uh, surface wind, and here it shows you some of the, uh, I guess these would be uh, typhoons developing in certain regions in the Pacific, close to where I live, I guess, and here we can even go and check out some of the hurricanes that are currently uh, around the US. And uh, what's really cool about this is that it allows you to see things in real time and explore things in real time. Uh, and it, it shows you everything about the winds. You can look at the winds uh, on the surface. You can also go up into the upper atmosphere as high as, this is 70 millibar, which is usually around the altitude of about 10 kilometers or 30,000 feet. And this is somewhere around 50,000 feet or maybe about 15 kilometers. So this is what the wind looks like up there. And this is something you don't get to see very much. Uh, but you can also explore things like temperature. And here it's temperature both on the surface and high up there. You can also explore these other things like relative humidity, uh, precipitation accumulation. So in this case, it's rain. Uh, you can look at, uh, I don't even know what that is, but it's something called a uh, cape surface. If you know what this is, post it in the comments below because I don't even know what some of these are. And most importantly, you actually don't just get to see the weather. This is not just the weather report, not just the scientific analysis of the weather, but this is also a uh, atmospheric condition report. And here, what the cool part about this uh, simulation is, is it's these three buttons. We're going to start with oceans. So if you click on oceans, you actually get to see two things. Currents. So in this case, uh, it's actually, oh no, sorry, this is waves. You get to see waves. So this is how the waves progress through the oceans around the world. So here you can kind of, you know, for example, California, you get to see where those big waves in California are coming from. So they kind of start here and they accumulate and so on. And if you are into um, basically studying how currents propagate various um, pollutants or materials around oceans, you click on currents and look at that it shows you all of the worldwide currents. So remember that leak in Japan, uh, Fukushima leak a few years ago? It kind of shows you how those pollutants spread across the ocean. And it shows you where they might have gone and how they might have uh, affected certain things around the world. And these uh, current simulations are really, really accurate. It shows you pretty accurately where the currents are and how they basically move around the planet Earth. So this is already pretty, pretty damn cool. But it gets cooler. Go into chemicals and you get to explore the uh, the pollution levels. The pollution levels here are very, very accurate. So first of all, this right here is China. And what we're showing is carbon monoxide concentration. So as you can see, a very large chunk of China where a lot of the factories are located has a huge cover and very, very high concentration of carbon monoxide. This is 628 uh, particulates. Here it's like 126, so basically it's like four times or five times higher than it should be. You go to other uh, countries and you can find other high concentrations of uh, carbon monoxide and look at that, it's 
parts of US with ridiculously high concentrations and uh, I guess parts of Northwest US and uh, Southwest Canada. So this is usually from various emissions, including of course uh, oil emissions uh, there's a lot of uh, oil in this region right here and you kind of get to study and see where the highest pollution on the planet earth is and maybe even do a bit of research and find out what's happening there but if you want to find out more about other elements so here's carbon dioxide these are the carbon dioxide levels and here you can actually just go to the region where you're located so let's say i'm, I'm somewhere right here and it tells you directly uh, what the current PPMV of carbon dioxide is. Now remember, this, this has been actually dramatically increasing in the last 100 years or so, and it's already over 400, and currently in South Korea where I live, it's 413. In China, it's around the same. Uh, and here you can kind of see that in this region uh, of Southeast Asia, so Cambodia and Laos, uh, it's much lower, but not by, not by, not by dramatic amount. So, average uh, carbon dioxide levels have actually increased quite dramatically and you won't really find any place around earth that has anything lower than 350 probably although you can kind of look around but even like places like antarctica have a very high carbon dioxide levels and lastly we can look at so2 which is sulfur this is usually a chemical also released from factories and are responsible for things like acid rain and as you can probably guess, all of the areas with high uh, use of factories, like of course China, uh, Japan, a bit of South Korea, also has very high SO2 levels. So this is regions where you might expect a relatively high uh, levels of uh, acid rain. And of course, US is on the list as well. And luckily, not so much for Northern Canada, but Southern Canada, where most people live, has that as well. So this, this simulation is super, super interesting. The last part here is the particulates, and this is uh, various types of uh, dusts and various types of pollutants, uh, some of them natural, some of them from the factories. Like for example, in South Korea where I live, sometimes there's actually a pollutant that comes all the way from China and specifically from the Chinese deserts actually. And uh, these are often um, measured in various sort of units, but it's the particulate matter unit that's most prominent here. And um, it kind of is important to measure because uh, if it's too high, people with allergies usually can't even breathe outside. And uh, it does sort of develop into serious breathing disorder if you live in, a, in an area that has very, very high pollutant or particulate matter. So we have uh, different types of pollutants here. This is dust um, or dust extinction. Then there is the microscopic po uh, particulate matter, slightly bigger particulate matter and even bigger particulate matter. So these are different types of particles and different types of uh, particles of different sizes. And as you can see, a lot of them are actually located right here in the deserts, just because basically it's sand particles. And lastly, we have the uh, sulfate extinction, which is the sulfates. So a lot of these things are worth researching just for fun. And most importantly, it's actually a really cool simulation to kind of play around with and to go into your area where you live and just kind of see what kind of pollution do you have? What kind of things are happening around your area? So like, for example, I'm here-ish. And look at that, there's a big hurricane or typhoon forming. Uh, there's also a variety of particulate matter that is in my area. And uh, if I go into the chemicals here, we have a relatively high concentration of CO2 and SO2. And when it comes to uh, air currents, so there is that large typhoon that's very likely is headed in our direction. Now, so all in all, this is actually kind of cool. I definitely recommend that you check out this really cool website and uh, play around with it, learn a little bit more about various currents, various winds, um, and of course, uh, a variety of pollutants that might be present in your area. So I'm posting the link for this uh, website in the description below. Check it out and let me know what you think in the comments below. Thank you for watching, guys. I'll see you tomorrow in the next video. And if you've enjoyed this video, don't forget to subscribe, share this video with someone who enjoys learning science and space sciences through simulations and video games, and come back tomorrow to learn something else. Space out, and as always, bye-bye.